Uh, my name is Chris Campbell. I'm a practicing CPA and I work with small businesses and individuals to help them pay the least amount of taxes possible while keeping them out of jail. So today I wanted to talk about the chargeback. This is specifically for business owners who use payment processors, specifically the online payment processors. You have an online business. I know that some folks use offline businesses as well and use online payment processors. So like your PayPal's, your Stripes. I think those are like the two biggest ones. I think Square's another one. Those are the big players that I see businesses use to process payments, whether that be credit cards, ACH, they make it very convenient and it's a great tool to use. But you gotta be careful when using these systems when it comes to either A, chargebacks, or B, using foreign uh, vendors or, or foreign transactions. So what I've seen happen, when it's caught a few of my clients off guard, where they have a few chargebacks. So let's say they process a few payments from their customers, and then the customer comes along and they distribute the charge. So what normally happens when a customer uh, disputes the charge Usually the bank is on the side of uh, the customer. If you've been in a situation where you had your debit card, credit card compromised, and if there were a number of charges on there that you're disputing, normally the bank will replenish the funds on your end. So they're pretty lenient towards the customer in that regard. If you charge the disputed, you usually wind up getting the money back. And that's on the customer side. Now, on the vendor side, there's an investigation and a lot of times uh, they'll just claw back the money. And I had this happen with a client recently where they were using one of those payment processors and they just woke up one day and they said the client is disputing this amount. It was a pretty large amount. So they clawed back the amount and they said, well, we are gonna do an investigation, but in the meantime, we're gonna hold this in the event that the investigation rules in the favor of customer and the deep it was a transaction that wasn't approved so it can really throw businesses for a loop from a cash flow standpoint because you don't know when it's coming you can just wake up one day and then the processes will tell you hey look we're gonna hold this money until uh, we get this thing figured out and there's really no warning with that so it can have a pretty devastating effect on cash flow if not prepared nothing is 100% foolproof but when it comes to these things but there are a couple of things that you may want to do to either A, minimize the chargebacks, but B, if you do get the chargebacks, to make sure that you win the investigations. So the first thing is you want to make sure that you document all your sales. Make sure all your sales are documented. There's a receipt that these payment processors create, but beyond that, especially if it's a larger transaction, I know if it's a small transaction, it's hard to have documentation, but if you're running large transactions from your customers, then you may want to make sure that you have some sort of agreement that's in writing that lays out the terms of the payment and make sure that's signed off on by your customer because that will come in handy when the investigation comes in. If you do get investigated for a chargeback, uh, one of the first things they ask is that you know, they want to see documentation from the transaction. So it's good to make sure that you have that documentation, you have it for support, you can show it to the bank and it gives you a good chance of winning your charge back and take over. The other thing you want to consider is letting the bank know about foreign transactions. So foreign transactions also trigger a fraud alert. Uh, sending money out or bringing money in from foreign places. Uh, there's a couple of hot spots. I think like China is one of them, but there's a whole list. But nine times out of 10, it's usually foreign transactions that trigger I guess these processors have some sort of trigger when it comes to foreign transactions. Sometimes foreign transactions will raise a flag with them. If your business legitimately engages uh, with foreign vendors, you may want to let that payment processor know what those specific vendors are and, or make sure that they're whitelisted if it's something that you do on a regular basis. So another thing you'd want to do to prevent chargebacks is make sure you're vetting your customers. If you go back to the early 2010s, mid 2010s, or late 2010s. So we're talking about 10, 15 years ago where credit card scamming was big. It's tougher to do now because of the, the, the chip that's in the cards. But prior to the chips being in the cards, the whole debit slash credit card scam was a big thing. 
So chargebacks were rampant because folks were getting card numbers, producing cards. It was ridiculous. It doesn't seem as bad now because it's a lot harder to do with the chips and the cards. But I'm just using that as an example that if you are in a business that has a higher risk of that, and I'm thinking more of the nightlife, maybe restaurants where you have folks coming in, those are probably more higher risk businesses where there might be some sort of fraudulent uh, transactions that are going on. You have your fraudulent transactions that leads to chargebacks. The more chargebacks that you have on your processor account, the worse your reputation becomes. And you just move that much closer to your processor wanting to either hold, uh, hold funds for a certain holding period before you get your hands on it, or they may just stop doing business with you altogether. So you have to understand the frequency of the chargebacks also hurts your reputation and your ability to get your hands on uh, the capital after the sale. You can prolong it quite a bit if you have a bit of bad reputation. So what you want to make sure you're protecting that reputation, especially if you're in a leisure uh, type of businesses where the risk is higher of having frauds and charges and chargebacks. I know it's tough, but it's a matter of screening clients. I've had some nightlife clients where if they were taking a card, they would take a couple of photo IDs to make sure that it all matched up. But the idea is that as an operator, you really have to pay close attention to, uh, you know, to your chargeback rate it can have some detrimental effects. So that's all for now on this topic. If you have any questions about this or any other tax, business, accounting related questions, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help. So that's all for now. I'll see you on the next one.